Well, say good morning to hearty Southwest omelet, biscuit, and burrito. With cheesy eggs, bacon, and just enough jalapenos to make you sit up in the saddle. Pick up either for just three bucks, now at Hardy's. Chicago PD, tonight at 10.30 on WZDX. Your first look at high school football scores and highlights. This is First Down Friday Night with the WZDX Sports Team. Sponsored by Zaxby's. Hey, good evening, everyone. We've reached the part of the year where only a select few teams can make it to, and that's the playoffs. We've got our very own round one action right here on first down Friday night. Yeah, Mo, at this point of the season, the message is clear for so many teams, and that's win or go home. Absolutely. Lots of teams have their sights set on winning that blue map at the Super 7 in about a month's time down at Auburn, and the journey begins tonight. We'll get to the highlights in a moment, but first, let's check in with the third member of the team, Kale Carlisle. Well, guys, it is a chilly night in the Tennessee Valley, but that's not stopping us from covering some high school football action. Coming up in just a few minutes, I'll have highlights from our varsity game of the night between St. John Paul II and Brooks. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Kayla. Yeah, we'll start off in Class 5A tonight. The Madison County Tigers started off pretty slow, losing two of their first three games. But after that, they've reeled off seven straight victories, including some big ones over at Madison Academy and Scottsboro to capture the region title. Tonight, their march to the Super 7 began with a home bout. Of course, they were taking on corner tonight, and uh, this game was actually full of uh, defensive plays, Charity, as you will see coming up right here. Um, Kate Watson plays it perfectly right there for the deflection. Later on, a couple of possessions later, Austin Mills throws it over the middle, only to be picked off by Cameron Blaylock. Now, later in the first, it's the Yellow Jackets of Corner. Finally starting to move the ball with a very nice catch here by Chandler Brakefield. Then, a few plays later, Corner. Um, Charity, you know, it's kind of cold, so he's going <laughs> to cough, cough up. up the ball, and it's recovered oh. by Madison County, County's Riley Pear. So, with just a couple of seconds to go, we call this guy's name all season long, and it is the man that goes by one syllable. It's Q. But his whole entire name is Kwame Gamble, and he will get the ball right here in the flat, cuts it back up corner, and then he is off to the races. Touchdown right there. Seven to nothing, Madison County on top. Let's check out your final scores. Madison County goes on to win by a final of 21 to 14. Next week, Madison County will take on Alexandria in the second round of the playoffs. Madison Academy taking on Jasper, who's the number one team in Class 5A. They're going into this game undefeated, but the Mustangs coming out hot. Timothy Spurlock takes the handoff on the reverse. He's scrambling. Look at this. He lobs it up. Slate Rucker, what an amazing catch. Says, get off of me. Sprints his way into the end zone for the score. Madison Academy strikes first 7 to 0. And this is against the number one team in the state. Yes, ensuing kickoff. Mo, I always say you know if we're showing a kickoff is because something good or bad happened. Right. Well, look at this. Adrian Berry. He's patient with it, waiting on his blockers. He finds the hole, and nobody's touching him. This guy was just way too fast for the Mustangs. Look at those strides. Look at that. Barry runs it back for the touchdown. They missed the extra point, though, so Mustangs lead 7 to 6 still. Still in the first. Vikings in the red zone now. John Collins makes it a bender miss. He's seeing nothing but green. Jasper on top now, 13 to 7. Mustangs not backing down, though. William Stokes takes the handoff. He's going to hit the outside, and look at this. He's breaking ankles all the way into the Ooh, end zone. I like it. Putting Madison Academy back on top, 14 to 7. Second quarter, same score, but not for long. The Vikings' Parker Sawyer sees a man coming, so he drops it off to Caden Shelton. He's in a bunch of traffic, but somehow makes it out of there. He turns on the Jets, putting up six more for the Vikings. Let's take a look at the final score. Jasper goes on to crush Madison Academy 55-14. to Next week, they'll be taking on Play Central. All right, great season for Madison Academy. Looking to see what the Mustangs will do next year. Let's move up to Class 6A now. May Jemison taking on Coleman. These two teams like to run variations of the options, so this game actually went very, very quickly. We are in the third quarter. Cats up 13 to nothing. Jemison with the ball. Terrence Robinson launching a deep pass down oh. the field, but he's intercepted by a Matt Brock. Coleman will take over. Let's fast forward now to the fourth quarter as Coach White looks on. Coleman inside the red zone. Max Doolin will be second by a host of Jaguar defenders like, hey, you're not going to score in our end zone just like that. But 
Coleman would get the last laugh on this one. They pitch it out to Jalen Hugh. He, watch him, uh, cut it back, break a one, Woo. two, three tackles in route to the end zone for a score right there. It was 20 to nothing at that point. Check out your final score on this one as Coleman goes on to eliminate May Jemison by final of 20 to nothing. Next week, Coleman's got a tough task on their hands. They're going to take on Oxford, a traditional power in Class 6A. Wish the best to make Jemison and company on next season. Also in Class 6A, Athens playing host to Buckhorn in round one. We're going to start things off in the second quarter. Score 28 to 0. Athens on top at this point, and there with the ball again. Jordan Scott with the ball. Look at this. He launches it up to Braden Gross, and he runs it all the way in for a Golden Eagles touchdown. That puts the score at this point 34 to nothing. Of course, Athens fans. Gotta love that. Absolutely. Still in the second quarter. With that score, too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Athens with the ball again. Scott hands the ball off to Gross. He gains some good yardage before being forced out of bounds, but he picks up the first down and they're in the red zone. Next play, Scott gets the ball, makes a pass to Wyatt Macklin, and he runs it in for guess what, Mo? Another Athens touchdown. Score is 41 to 0 at that point. Let's take a look at the final. The Golden Eagles went on to win 62 to 14. Next week, they'll be taking on Clay Chalkville. All right, everyone, of course, you know, don't forget, we're on social media at Mo Carter WZDX at Charity WZDX. And, of course, our very good friend, uh, Kayla Carlisle, she's at Kayla WZDX. Shoot us a tweet. We may read it out on air before the show is over. So you saw Athens just scored a lot of points, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Well, Brooks and St. John Paul, they know how to score a lot of points as well. We've seen oh, that yeah. happen all year. And guess what? They're facing off in the first round of the playoffs. We've got that coming up next because it's our varsity game of the night. Stay with us. We'll be right back with that one. Back when I was growing up, you'd never know who was going to show up to my mother's kitchen. She just made everyone feel welcome at our table. I've always loved Southern cooking, but it isn't always the healthiest. Then I came across some healthy recipes and fitness tips from Blue Cross that have helped ever since I was diagnosed pre-diabetic. Now, I can rest easy knowing that I'm putting my health and the health of my family and friends first. <laughs> I can't keep people out of this kitchen. What makes Rick's a little bit different than all the other barbecue joints that you're possibly going to go to is the, the family-like atmosphere that we get involved with. We're family-owned and operated, and we treat our customers like family. Um, some of the most popular products we have are our baked potatoes, of course, the loaded baked potatoes with meat. Um, we also have things like Mandarin chicken salads. We have Southwestern chicken wrap. What I love about Buffalo Rock is how personal and family-like that company actually is. You know who really loves fresh food? Amateur chefs, stay-at-home parents, salad lovers, barbecuers, smorgasbordgers, hors d'oeuvres, fondueurs, and flambeurs, oh, midnight snackers, brown baggers, bakers, and throw it in the microwavers. At Kroger, you can get all the fresh you want at a great price with delivery and free pickup because we believe in fresh for everyone. Every wireless carrier claims they can save you money, but Spectrum Mobile's online savings calculator tells you exactly how much your family can save by switching. But what if one person uses a ton of data because they have an exciting and vibrant life, and the other person is you? Doesn't matter. Spectrum Mobile lets you mix and match plans to get the most savings across your entire family. So what you're saying is, we're family. Not even close. Huh. To see how much you can save, go to spectrummobile.com slash save. I'm gonna start planning our family vacation anyhow. Sunday, it's a doubleheader on Fox. First, the Falcons take on Drew Brees and the 7 and 1 Saints. Touchdown! Then, in America's Game of the Week, Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers are ready for a showdown in Lambeau against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Touchdown, Green Bay! It all kicks off with a special Fox NFL Sunday, live from West Point. Sunday at noon on WCDX. Your home of ESPN Radio is 97.7 The Zone. Now, back to the action on First Down Friday night. Welcome back, everyone. We had a lot of games taking place in the Shoals tonight. One of those games featured a defending state champion. Absolutely. Now, while others uh, feature two 
top scoring offenses in all the Tennessee Valley. So we turn things over to our third member of our crew. That's Kayla Carlisle, who is out west tonight. Kayla. Hey guys, well, like you guys just mentioned, both of these games I covered tonight were powerhouse teams, but unfortunately only two of the four teams can advance to round two. So let's go ahead and start things off with our varsity game of the night brought to you by Zaxby's. St. John Paul II had their first playoff appearance just last season. This year, they're trying to make it farther into the playoff run against a team that they lost to by 60 points just two years ago. Let's go ahead and start things off with St. John Paul II versus Brooks. Well, we're going to get straight into it. Second quarter, Brooks is down by four, but it's the Falcons with the ball. Seth Brown launches it to Sean Zirkle. Zirkle, he's going to juggle it, but he makes the catch. And in the end zone, no doubt, Falcons go up 28 to 16. But now it's the Lions' turn. Carson Daniel goes down the middle, except his plans get soiled by Zirkle, who picks it off and gets a Falcons first down. Luckily for the Lions, though, JP2 would not capitalize on that. So the Lions try again. Daniel tosses it over to Cameron Beckworth, who makes his way into the end zone. No problem at all. The Lions, though, they decide to go for two. Daniel hands it off to John Hodges, and he makes it in. We're back at a four-point game. But Brown's back at it with the accuracy as he scrambles around but finds Brian Moss ready to make the epic catch. Moss gets the catch, goes into the end zone, giving the Falcons the heavy lead once again. But don't count the Lions out just yet. 1.7 seconds left on the clock until halftime, and Daniel, he's going to link up with Cameron Dorflinger in the end zone for the last second score. But here's where all the questions start coming up. The Lions, they're going to decide to go for two again. Daniel calls his own and leaps towards the pylon. Looks like he would hit it, but the refs, they call it short. We're going to leave that call up to you guys at home. And here's a look at the final score of that game. Moving over now to Mars Hill Bible as they hosted Woodville in Class 1A. The Panthers came to play, scoring three touchdowns on the first three drives of their possessions. Not to mention two of those TDs earned an extra two points, giving the Panthers a 22-0 lead in the first quarter. It wouldn't be until the Panthers' third attempt at a two-point conversion that Woodville would get the stop. The Panthers really proving they're ready to defend their title back at the state championships this year. And here's a look at the final score for that game. As far as who they play next week, I'm going to leave that up to Mo and Charity. But before I go, I just have to give a big shout out to any fans who showed out to the games tonight because this was definitely the coldest weather we have experienced all season long. We're definitely going to have to start bundling up for the rest of the year because my hands are numb, my feet are numb, everything. I'm just freezing cold. So, guys, with all that being said, I'm going to send it back to you in the warm studio. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Kayla, because I know how she felt tonight. It was cold <laughs> out there. It's cold mean, out there. I had gloves on tonight, but then I could not like focus my camera exactly. correctly. <laughs> so I had to actually take one of them off. So as soon as I got back in the car, turn the heat all oh, yeah. the way up. <laughs> oh yeah. So of course we saw Mars Hill win tonight. We saw St. John Paul win tonight. Let's take a look at who they'll take on in the next round. Mars Hill, they'll take on South Lamar in round two of the class 1A playoffs. As far as the class 4A playoff, St. John Paul, congratulations. Congratulations to them. They finally get their first playoff victory in their school's history. They beat Brooks, as we just saw. Next week, they'll take on Jacksonville, who beat Cordova, Cordova tonight. So fly, Eagles, fly. Congratulations to them once again. Yeah, huge congrats to the Falcons. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly. I mean, they're just making history just one day at a time. Oh, yeah, Coach Lloyd doing a great job with that program. No <laughs> doubt, no doubt. All right, everyone, we've got more coming up on us. Uh, WZDX first down Friday night, including a trip to Class 7A where the big boys play, as they talk about. They had a lot of good games. Austin, Florence, James Clements, Sparkman. We'll got all their highlights next. Looking to take a dream vacation or pay for an unexpected expense? A home equity line of credit from Avadian offers competitive rates, savings on fees, and fast approval. Visit AvadianCU.com today to get started. Estate jewelry is very popular. We do have a wonderful selection of estate jewelry. And one of the really nice things about our antique and estate pieces is that we do have a master jeweler who actually takes the time to thoroughly inspect them before we put them out for our customers. And any necessary um, repairs or modifications that need to be done are done before the customer picks those items out to, to take home with them. Wholesale jewelry. 
big storm. Little crisis. It takes hours to make your garden grow, but some pesky critter has pilfered all your produce. There has to be a better way. Introducing Owl Alert, a fantastic way to target unwanted creatures today. The Owl Alert works with sight, sound, and light to zero in on nuisance critters the modern pesticide freeway. The realistic design mimics the look of a real owl. Plus, it has an ultrasonic blast that affects critters at the speed of sound. It also features menacing red glowing eyes to target pests after dark. Once animals get within range, the motion sensor activates during both the daytime and night. No more smelly and messy pesticides or poisons. Get Owl Alert today for just $19.99. But wait, call now and you can double the offer. Plus get a 25-foot pocket hose bullet. Just pay separate fee. That's two Owl Alerts and the pocket hose bullet. Call or click now. Call 1-800-390-7929. That's 1-800-390-7929. Or visit by OwlAlert.com. So call 1-800-390-7929 now. Earn 2.3% APY on a 30-month CD with one of Avadian's Fall CD Specials. Or 2% APY on our 13-month CD. That's 2.3% APY for 30 months or 2% APY for 13 months. Visit AvadianCU.com to apply online. Stay on top of Valley News 24-7. Download the Rocket City Now app today. Now, more scores and highlights from across the Valley on First Down Friday Night. All right, last season, the James Clemens Jets soared past the competition in the regular season, but fell in the first round of the playoffs at home. This season, they rolled through the regular season once again, unblemished in region play, and they're hoping to change their fortunes as the postseason play began, and we're looking to advance. Of course, James Clemens playing host of Vestavia Hills in round one of the Class 7A playoffs. And you see Coach Wood right there. Now, second quarter, Rebels up 7 to nothing and punting, but the Jets coming through and blocking the punt right there. Eventually, it'll get into the hands of Chris Hope. He tries to scoop it, but he's like, man, we fall on it and put the Jets in good field position. Moments later, it's his teammate uh, Dylan Blackburn. Muscles his way across the goal line for a score right there. That ties the ball game up at 7 apiece. But Vestavia Hills, you know, they play in that region. That's got Hoover and Thompson and all kind of other good teams. So they're battle tested. As you see, Eli Sawyer threads the needle right here on the slant route for a first down inside the red zone. That will set up this. It's Sawyer rolling out, and then he scrambles because he's under pressure. Eventually fires a touchdown pass to Wells Watt Woo! in the back of the end zone. Vestavia Hills actually led 14-7 to at the break, but as we check out your final, it was James Clemens wow. that comes back and beats Vestavia Hills by a score of 21-20. to Congratulations to the Jets for advancing to the next round. Now, James Clemens will face the winner of this one. It's Sparkman and Hoover. Now, Hoover, they've got a quarterback, Robbie Ashford, who's an old Miss commit. He's missed a lot of time this year. He had four incompletions on the Bucks' first drive. Now, this one is on fourth and five as he throws it out of the back of the end zone. But Ashford would get things going on the next possession, hitting Ray Hampton for a first down right here. A few plays later, it's Ashford to Malik Thomas in the end zone, and the Bucks take a 7 to nothing lead. Now, later on, and Nick Sawyer scrambles, tries to get rid of the ball, but guess what? He'll be intercepted on this play right here by Corey Chapman. He breaks some tackles, stays on his feet until it takes not one, not two, but three guys to take him down. Not good results with Sparkman. And then Hoover cashes in as Ashford hooks up with Thomas. The acrobatic catch in the end zone for a score. Let's check out your final score in this one as Hoover goes on to knock off Sparkman by a final of 21 to 3. So next week, we've got James Clements taking on Hoover in the second round of the 7A playoffs.
Sticking with Class 7A, the Florence Falcons ended their regular season on fire, winning their last four games, and tonight they were hoping to keep that going the first round of the playoffs as they took on Mountain Brook. The last time these two teams met was back in 2013. Florence won that game 33-21. to Second quarter, score tied at 14. Florence with the ball. D. Beck went on the QB keep. This guy is just an all-around good athlete, Mo. He picks up the first down and then some before being forced out. A few plays later, once again, Beck with calling his own number. He bounces outside, and this time he finds the end zone for the score. At the half, Florence led 21 to 14. Do you think the coaches were just like, just give it to D? Just give it to D. Of course. Third quarter, Mountain Brook not backing down. Thomas Roberts drops back, passes it to Sam Higgins, who is wide open. Cruises in for the score, tying the game at 21. But let's see who came out on top of this matchup. Florence goes on to barely win it by a final of 24 to 21. And Florence will face the winner of Austin versus Thompson. Let's take a look at that matchup. It only took the Warriors two plays to score after an Austin fumble. Sam Reynolds takes in a short carry, put Thompson up 7-0. The very next possession, Sawyer Pate. Gotta, uh, let's let him celebrate so, a little bit. Let's let him celebrate a little bit, yeah. He looks deep, finds Ryan Peppins. He's wide open. Look at this. Woo! He cruises in for the score. That was a 42-yard touchdown pass, a quick 14 Zero advantage. Austin back to punt now. EJ Edwards. He oh, comes in untouched. Coming. Special teams coming up big this week. Kevin Shipman jumps on the loose ball. The next play, they're going to capitalize on it. Pat throws to the front corner of the end zone. Trey Robertson brings it in for another score. Let's take a look at the final score of that game. So with the victory, Oh, Thompson, oh, Thompson wins that game. Thompson wins that game 54 to 20. With that, they'll be taking on Florence next week. Man, I don't know what to say about Austin. I mean, I thought they were on fire throughout the entire year, and then all of a sudden, you know, they lose to Sparkman, then they lose to um, James Clements, and now they're out of the playoffs just like that with a big loss to Thompson. But hey, salute to all our Class 7 18s, so we know what kind of fire you have to go through whenever you get into the postseason. We are heading into the break, and we'll wrap up the show when we return on First Down Friday night. Success for every student. We are Calhoun Community College. From our humble beginnings in the 1940s to the largest two-year college in Alabama, Calhoun brings together quality and affordability to meet the educational and training demands for our high-tech area. Calhoun has options for everyone. Earn your degree in two short years. Get a certification in just a few months. Take classes that transfer. Your success story starts right here at Calhoun Community College. When choosing a pharmacy, it's important that all of your needs are met. In addition to fast and friendly service, your locally owned Health Mart provides the trusted advice and personal attention you're looking for. Every time you walk in our door, we're here to answer your questions and help you find exactly what you need. What are you looking for in a pharmacy? For more information and to find the Health Mart nearest you, visit healthmart.com slash Huntsville. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare coverage? Did you know there are extra benefits available? Dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage? Make sure you're on the plan that's right for you. Many areas have plans available with $0 copays for many services and $0 deductibles. Plus, premiums may be as low as $0 a month. Call now for your free Medicare coverage review. Please call 800-628-1738. That is 800-628-1738. Are you dreaming of a healthier lifestyle? Is your foot pain keeping you from exercise or general activity? The Huntsville Podiatry Center has been serving North Alabama for 43 years. Our goal is to comfort, care, correct, and prevent foot problems. Call us today at Huntsville Podiatry Center. We can help. Specializing in all aspects of foot problems, the Huntsville Podiatry Center can help. Call for an appointment today. It's time. Check out 97.7 The Zone.
taking a look at those scores. It looks like the road to Class 2A is once again going to go through Fife. Fife. Send them out in the playoffs. Don't do it like that. Come exactly, on. <laughs> man. Coach Benefil and company, hey, we know we'll be coming out to see you guys real soon. Oh, yeah. Let's check in with Class 3A, the Westminster Christian Wildcats. They got off to a hot start at the right time of the year. Yeah, and that propelled them to a second straight region title. Tonight they begin their march to the Super 7 with the battle against Pisgah. You know what I loved about the playoffs this year is the fact that we had so many teams that were playing other teams from the region. Yeah. All right, a very chilly night for a hot matchup that had a lot of scoring. Almost uh, to the end of the first quarter, we get an almost end-to-end -end run by Pisca's Nathaniel Carnelson. A look at the legs on this young man right here. He takes it from his own 15 all the way down to the Wildcats 10. That sets up this amazing QB keeper by Parker Law as he lays down the law at 6 to the scoreboard right here. Now the Eagles decide not to go for one, but to go for two. Law rolls out and he finds Cameron Free in the front of the end zone for a score that makes it 14 to 8. Now the warmest guy in the, on the field was the mascot, you know, because he just had all that fur on him. So the Cats back on the prowl. Jackson Billy moves the ball up the field a couple of times and adds six more to his resume right here as you see him come right into the end zone with the score with the point after. It was actually no good as it uh, doinks oh. right off the uh, field goal post. There's a lot of back and forth in this game, but let's check out your final score from out at Westminster Christian as they go on to knock off Pisca by final of 47 to 28. Next week, they will take on a Randolph County. All right, guys, Rogers taking on Priceville tonight. A good matchup in the Class 4A playoffs. We're going to start things off in the first quarter. Rogers with the ball. Logan Evans gets the ball. He takes off, gets some good yardage for being brought down. Looks like he was going to break away there, but Priceville got to him. Next play, Jake Wallace gets the ball. He runs it up the middle. That'd be good for a Rogers touchdown, putting them on the board. 7-0. So the Pirates steal the early lead. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gotta love it. Still the first. Priceville with the ball. Wyatt, he hands it off to Jerry Burton, a former first down Friday night we MVP. Know what he can do. Oh yeah. He dodges the Pirates defense. Getting close to the goal line. Look at this. He's trying to dive his way in there, but he was, he was, he was out. He was out. Acrobat as you get an A, man. Oh yeah. See, that sets him up for this. Hurt. Hands the ball off to Jackson Cross. He runs it in for a Bulldogs touchdown. That would tie up the score at 7, but let's take a look at the final. Priceville goes on to win it 44 to 23. Next week, they'll be taking on Northside. All right, everyone, let's switch things over to our first down Friday night MVP of week 10. Now, last week, Grissom's offense racked up 500 passing yards and nearly 200 of those yards were on the receiving side and went to one guy, Elijah Johnson. Tigers receiver had five catches for 199 yards and two touchdowns. His stout play helped seal a victory for Grissom and provided momentum into the next season. So, huge congrats. To it Johnson. seemed like what we were calling was working, and that's a fun night to have. And, but EJ did a wonderful job. Big Big playmaker, a guy that can get out in space and make people miss, so, and he did that Friday night. I feel like next year we're going to have a pretty decent like team. I feel like we're going to build in the offseason. We're going to come together. So like this win gave us momentum in the next season. And he is our final first down Friday night MVP of the week. So congratulations to all our guys. Yeah. And congratulations to all our teams who made it to the postseason and the ones who are also going on to the next round. We'll have you all covered right here on First Down Friday night next week on WZDX. For Charity Chambers, I'm Mo Carter, along with our friend Kayla Carlisle out in the cold. Have yourself a great weekend, and we will see you next week. You've been watching First Down Friday night, sponsored by Zaxby's.